Good morning, thieves. It's Thursday, but I don't know when I'm gonna put this up, probably in a couple of days. Um, because this is, we'll get two videos this week. One will be like a bit of an instructional video on um, how to install suspension. Getting heaps of questions lately, just about um, the HBMC lifts. Um, always getting questions about GBM upgrade. But now I'm just gonna show you something in my car as I'm driving. There's something going on with my car. Let's see if I can get it to do it. It's like when I put my foot down, here we go. I'm calling it the Y62 death wobble. I don't know if you saw it then, it wasn't that bad. But when I boot it in first gear, then it changed in the second, you get like this sort of death wobble in the back of it. I've done 14,000 Ks, I'm not expecting it to be like that. So uh, this will lead into, um, I guess, a, a, um, I'll talk about this because I can't fix it all in this video, but I suspect that the HBMC system has depressurized a bit. So we're going to measure this in the coming weeks as we get time and uh, report back whether, I don't know, do these systems need servicing or maintenance? Like I know I go pretty hard on my car, but it's, and I drive Y62s every day. Like, you know, I'll be driving uh, one down to the dyno today. And like, I know what they drive like. I've driven enough of them to know how they should drive. So, I don't know if you've experienced the Y62 death wobble as well. Here we go, I'll give it a boot for in a second. We'll see if we can get it to do it. And, um, like, comment down for it. It's just like a back end sort of wobble. It feels like there's heaps of weight. My last car actually did it a little bit. It wasn't even HBMC. But that, I just said because it was heavy. All right, here we go. There we go. You feel it? It's like a shudder. Yeah, the whole car sort of wobbles a bit. So, I've got to look into that. Other things happening, I was talking about the light bar last week. Performance, excellent. <laughs> when you open the sunroof though, it's really loud and has this like humming. So, <laughs> at 100 k's an hour. So that's not solved either. We're gonna have to talk a bit about that. Um, I, I really want a light bar on the front of this thing, but it's just, um, it's harder than it is. Updates, it sounds like um, our rear bar with the uh, tire swing away, the sample or prototype um, is coming out of production sort of late this month. So um, I'm gonna buzz that here. Um, I'll probably air freight it and fit it up to my car so we can get a bit of progress because it's one thing the community needs now is more um, rear bars available in the world. There's just not much accessibility out there. Um, I want to talk a bit about roof rack ladder because the uh, we had a heap of pre-orders for the Series 5 guys out there that wanted the roof rack ladder. I fitted one to my car and I just wasn't happy with it. And I must admit, I did it just before the Love Day trip. I smashed it out in like half an hour and I wasn't happy with like putting weight on the ladder and I just I put it down to the Series 5 tailgate not being as good. Sorry about the sun, there we go. Um, uh, not being as supportive. Turns out, when I'm now I've had a bit more time to go back and have a look at it, it was my really bad installation. I didn't adjust the bolts at the top on the roof rack properly. It isn't sitting hard up against the roof rack. So we're gonna do a bit of an adjustment to that and I'll come back to you whether this is actually a plausible thing for the Series 5. Series 1 to 4 is no problems but I was just worried about the Series 5s because there's not as much strength. Still wouldn't mind, you know, we're gonna rate it to 90 kilos, but I wouldn't mind rating it to like 150 kilos, um, but that's gonna take some extra support on the inside of the tailgate. Like I said, it's a bit of a dyno day today, so we've, we're dropping two cars down to Powertech to get them tuned up. Uh, interestingly, one with headers, and the other one with cat back, although the one with cat back has got 35s on it, so we're not gonna be able to do a direct comparison. Uh, but we can do one on the Series 5 with 33s. Uh, be, yeah, full pacemaker system. We'll see how that goes. Uh, and actually, I'm gonna take that for a drive, I reckon, because I reckon that's gonna be a bit of fun. And that will be our Thursday, might be Thursday and Friday video. So you guys got something to watch this weekend. <laughs> Here we go, yeah, yeah. 
So I had a nice coffee this morning. Anyone that knows me knows I don't drink coffee at all. Uh, and when you're in South Australia, it is like very much, you have to have Farmers Union iced coffee. So I've had about a half one. I'm a little bit wired. And I think this is why you're getting a bit more of an exciting video this morning. So we've been working on this car. It's got a new pedal bar. It's not my car, but it is Hermosa Blue. But this is the one I was telling you about that had the exhaust. <laughs> I hope it's finished. I'm here before Steve's actually got to work. And um, I want to set up like a, a big picture out front with all the cars that we've got at the moment. Um, and then we're going to shoot them down to the dyno. Uh, but while we're here, let's... So this is going to be the first time I've heard this. I'm hoping I've got the keys. I just got all of the keys for every car. This will be like a cold start with pacemaker headers full system. Um, so let's see what it sounds like. Not bad. This is the one I'm going to be trying to get to drive today because I want to hear the extractors. Oh, the raspiness. Everyone that has extractors on their car says that they have much more low down power. So I'm going to get to drive it both to and from the dyno and I'll see how it compares to mine because yeah, I've driven a fair few of these things. One thing to know with um, when you're going to go get your car tuned, make sure you've got a clean air filter. I recently uh, forgot about this phenomenon and running around with Steve doing little drags and stuff and he blew the doors off my car every time. He had uh, like similar size tyres, similar weight, they're both pretty new cars, but he's killed mine every time off the lights, just, and then I went back, tapped my filter out. It was so dirty, I'll show you what I mean. There's half a Fraser Island, there's Love Day. There's a bit of a glass house. No wonder she wasn't going so great. The things I'll do to set up for a shot, for a video, and it helps when you kind of work at a full dry place that has heaps of Y62s around, but it, it's a good backdrop, hey? Um, so other news is that, if you looked at last week's video of the light bar and stuff, you'll see I was eyeing off a warehouse. Looks like it's happening. Like, it's actually gonna happen. We're just about to sign documents and um, get ourselves a piece of 570 square meters of, of Dash warehouse, which is gonna be so good. As much as I've loved working out of containers and building and all that sort of stuff, it's just getting too tight. And when shipments come in, we don't know what to do. So that is really, really exciting news in Dash world. And I can't wait to move in and show you guys that part of it. I can't help thinking, imagine if we had DNA at the same place. Like, that would be epic. Imagine how many Y62s we could fit in. Imagine they're like the housewarming party. I don't know. Anyway, we're allowed to dream for now. And um, all right, <laughs> take a photo. Hopefully this is gonna end up being a good thumbnail or if not, maybe just a good uh, um, DNA cover pick. So if you don't know, this is the other business I run, 4x4 DNA, uh, it's an installation parts business and um, um, we're on Facebook. If you wanna see the builds that are happening at 4x4 DNA, just go find us on Facebook. We've got a page there and that's where we post up all of our extra cool Y62 content and Land Cruiser Navarra, that sort of thing too. Just thinking, where's Steve's car? It's nearly eight o'clock, it's not even here yet. It's like lunchtime in my world. <laughs> Come on, Steve, where are you? All right, everyone knows that for every good photo you turn, oh, here he is. <laughs> what time do you call this? Everyone knows you're gonna have a good photo. You've got to turn your headlights on, so done that. All right, might as well get in position. Lights on. Let's see if he turns his wheels in like a good photo model. He's done this before. 
All right, time to go take that snap. All right, I thought there would be a bit of a fight on my hands. Who got to drive the one with headers uh, and full pacemaker system? I ended up winning. So I'm gonna just, I'm, I'm sure, say, <laughs> Sally and Dave, you don't mind me just making sure the system sounds good. So um, I will give it a couple of revs uh, just to make sure, you know, we fitted it correctly. When did Virginia get so busy? actually how quick it goes I guess I've been driving a car with 35s this one's got 33s or just stock tires but gee it felt like it had punched straight off the line then <laughs> can't wait to see what it's like after drop it down a little bit it's not offensively loud say that we're going to put a speed camera on Old Port Wayfield Road today, but we'll stay under the speed limit. Sorry that this video is chopping and changing around the place a bit, but in the mornings I've got a bit of time to do this sort of thing. Then it gets crazy and then in the afternoons I get a bit more time. But I want to go back to the fuel economy. Oh, sorry, that's a $5 fuel fine for saying that word, but I think it's important to tell you. After tapping the air filter out on the weekend, getting all that dust and crud out of there, blowing it from the backwards, uh, you know, the clean side through to the dirty side, all this stuff out of it, I was returning like 14.4 litres per hundred on my school run. Uh, and my kids go to school a fair way away, so it's like a 50k round trip. Before, I was getting like 17, 18 litres per hundred. So, um, yeah, it's kind of amazing definitely change your filters and clean them out regularly guys next part um uh the car that we sent to the first car we sent to the dyno uh went down there really impressed how it went uh we ended up getting 217 kilowatts at the wheels all four i'm always scared about talking about dyno numbers because every dyno is different even the, the temperature of the day that you do it on things can change what fuels in it all that sort of stuff but anyway, it did 217. What really surprised me though, this place we use for a fair bit actually, we usually, a dead standard car pre-run, we usually get about 180 something. Um, this one with extractors and the full system got 204. Now, I'm not gonna say I know much about dyno tuning because I really don't, but um, I don't know, it seemed like this was either a supercar to start with or maybe the exhaust upgrade leaned it out which got the fuel ratios better which made more power which means we didn't see as much at the top uh like as much like big change still still like good power gains uh, especially on the torque side of things too actually um now it's 580 something at all wheels so uh yeah very interesting about the dining tree we've got another one down there too which was suffering big time because it's running 35s uh keen to see how that one has gone as well so this is the other car that had a bit of a spin up on the dyno. Um, yeah, big tyres, definitely feel it, and a heavy car. So getting a bit more power out of this one would be good. Again, apologies for chopping and changing. Yesterday after I got so busy, I've realised I forgot to tell you what happened with that white car on the 35s. So we punched out 185 kilowatts at all four wheels on that one. Like when I've gone back and looked at my dyno sheets from my car, um on 35 my old one uh, i think the best i got was in the 160s so um yeah very happy with the result i don't know if the series fives just seem to punch out a little bit more kilowatts somehow uh but anyway so that car is going to be um feel a massive change with a tune so all these cars from factory run really rich uh and it's because they want to keep up with you know what's going to be happening in the UAE where it's really hot conditions and they drive you know 200 k's an hour all day over there so um they end up running a really rich um go get them tuned advance the timing lean them out and you get better fuel economy more power 
And if anything, now it needs to get any more than that out of it, uh, probably need more air into it somehow, you know, supercharged. So um, good results in the dyno. If you have a Y62, definitely talk to someone about tuning it because it just makes it better. And don't wait too long because to get all the improvements in the fuel economy, it takes like years to pay off the, the tune. So do it sooner rather than later. Hope that made sense. All right, continuing back. All right, at the yard now, because it's Thursday night. Thursday night's delivery night, uh, or dispatch night. Off we go. And I just remembered, this rocked up today. What's this, you ask? This is a new aluminium, like, bolt kit, uh, or tie-down point, something like that, I suppose, that you'd say, for our new roof rack. So we want to get into the accessory side of things with our roof racks. Roof racks. So channel nut at the bottom, and this funky looking thing at the top. So I'll do some testing, tie them down, rip them apart, try and break it, all those sorts of things. And then you'll be able to get them on our website when we have stock. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's see if I can do this one-handed and in mirror image. So it goes in like that. This rotates down so you can, I don't know if you'd, why you'd want to. Maybe to get into your carport garage, you can flip that down. Ugh. Anyway. Then you just uh, spin it around, tightens up. Ugh. I'll get there eventually. There we go. The next, I'll get my shirt in the, in the scene even. Dash off road, <laughs> roof rack accessory.